in the, uh, we are certainly not alone in this work in terms of what artists are doing in, in the world at large. There is a fairly uh, comprehensive community uh, spread around uh, the globe. I've mentioned some of the artists down in the lower right hand corner, and there is a book up on the table called Meta Creation that really outlines the kind of survey of uh, this kind of work. Um, the other thing that I would uh, sort of uh, guide you to uh, is the, uh, the Vita competitions in Spain, which every year a uh, uh, large prize, there are three large prizes, are open for works in this area. And if we have a, if we have a moment at the very end of the evening, I'll uh, take us to that website. But I, I want to make sure that we have time for, for Corey to sort of show some of our new programming. Um, we're moving on now to a new project. And in addition to the live performances that we do, uh, we really want to ex extend the work with the immersive installations. And this project is called um, Archipelago. Um, our principal science advisor is Jen Dunn, who is here to come this evening. And the idea in this specific uh, work is to work with the idea, the, the metaphor of um, seeds, where we will populate any uh, a, a sort of a synthetic environment, a screen environment, that will be modeled in a uh, unique way and in a different way at multiple locations. So it's a network of interconnected installations that are going to be populated by the same seeds, which are, Corey will show you some forms that are essentially our seed forms, or like our seed forms. And these will uh, evolve in relationship to external conditions that are applied at those locations. And the data governing those, uh, those uh, specific uh, constraints, if you, if you will, will be real, will come from real world data sets. So that could be anything from monitoring like live traffic trends in a large city to uh, looking at kind of like you do stuff like looking at the water table in Santa Fe and as that changes that might influence some small or dramatic element of the installation that's taking place in the Santa Fe environment versus say like uh, heating trends or, or uh, ocean current trends around like New Guinea or something like that. So that we're, depending on wherever we're installing, we're actually looking at trends that are happening either environmentally or socially in that area and using that real world data as one of the driving forces for part of the parameter set that's governing the artificial uh, niche policy. Um, so, well, maybe what we, these are some of the key <coughs> concepts that we are working with and we clearly see ourselves as artists but we are also designers and uh, if you look at the work being done in this realm, you'll see that people wear many different hats and the teams are comprised of many different um, expertise. Um, just in art and design, uh, you have a relationship that's not um, dissimilar to science and engineering in, in some ways. Um, and I'm not gonna, we can get into a whole conversation about the, dif the differences, but it's something that um, my college, the College of Santa Fe, is going to have to grapple with very, very soon. Um, some of the central metaphors, and, and, and I just wanted to un sort of underscore that as artists, we can, we can work with a life in its sort of metaphorical sense, um, that uh, we don't necessarily have to put our, our uh, work forward in a peer-reviewed journal to, uh, in terms of being scientists per se, which gives us a kind of a freedom, a shoot from the hip sort of approach, I suppose. Um, but really that are an interest in creation, creation mythology, I need a drink. Uh, creation mythology and indeterminate structures underlie the, the ideas that we are working with in a life. Um, ecology is really a big one for us. Network dynamics and, the, and large scale relationship um, among really intricate um, parts. Evolution, and in the earlier work it was more mutation and adaption. Although um, I am interested in, I made it, I did, not knowing Christina's talk, um, I'm really interested in the idea of the singularity, the idea that machines will begin to think as a kind of eugenic idea of perfection, because I see it as very much linked. And Corey and I are very aware of this, this kind of these kinds of arguments and the, and the areas of criticism that can be leveled at this sort of work, but there isn't really enough, enough critical discourse going on. Uh, 
Uh, and that's why uh, Christina's work is really exciting to us. Um, genetics in terms of recombinant aesthetic operations, and that is quite complex in terms of what governs the form that our work takes. Um, complexity in terms of the intricate multi-level relationships and recursions, which we're going to show shortly. Um, biomimicry is a very large part of what we do in a different sense that, than designers who may be trying to design a perfect raincoat that repels water. We're interested more in the idea of biophilia in forms that it elicits sort of a, a warm response from, from humans or even the idea of creating forms that seem to have an affinity for you and you have an affinity for them. Um, and then an, an older idea of alchemy, which we directly translate into the idea of data transcoding or any kind of transcoding, whether... Yeah, I mean, it's basically changing the word from transmutation into transcoding. You're still taking something of one specific elemental or base property and you're using a process of translation or transcoding to turn that elemental property into some other element. And, and in the other area, the idea that we're coming out of this through the idea, uh, through the medium really of noise, the idea of distilling noise into meaningful pattern. So a dist alchemy is, is known in part for its sort of very arcane and detailed process of distillation. And, and as we draw our name noise fold, not just from, I mean, David alluded to this a little bit, basically the idea if you think of in, in the audio world, white noise is that spectrum of audio where every frequency, that every audible frequency is contained. And so it's not actually just random noise, it's every sound. And as you start pulling different frequencies out of that white noise, you can start to create pretty much any kind of ordered structured timbre or kind of frequency or sound that you want out of white noise as a source material. And so likewise, we're looking at kind of this this field as um, a, a primal substance. It's kind of looking at video as an elemental substance in and of itself, and in our case, 3D video. But, but we're drawing all of these forms in a way from that, metaphorically from that noise or from that chaos. And then there are just at the bottom there are some related artistic practices which inform our own. And what I would like to do now is pull the umbilical here and give it to Corey because uh, we are, uh, Corey in the last few days has developed a new method of uh, 3D uh, feedback, um, which is relative to the way that we uh, work with our visual. So this doesn't have any sound associated with it, but it is really sweet stuff. Yeah, it actually relates quite a bit to, to the concept of, gen of eugenics and genetics, because um, the reason we started uh, working with, with feedback systems in 3D was actually because we were unsatisfied with a lot of the behaviors that we were getting, or not even just behaviors, but a lot of the structures that we were getting from traditional uh, methods using kind of more standard uh, mathematical equations from astrophysics and stuff. It was giving very beautiful kind of curvilinear forms, but we were getting, um, we weren't getting a whole lot of variation as we started kind of trying to manipulate these equations. Neither of us are really mathematicians. And so as we started really plugging away at it, most of the, 90% of the time, we throw in an equation that just generates utter nonsense as opposed to anything actually interesting. And so we spent some time, um, we spent some time trying to come up with new ways of actually generating base forms. And when I say a base form, uh, I'll go ahead and as soon as we get an image up, just show you a few. It can be anything from a flat plane to a sphere to a uh, Mobius strip or a Klein bottle or a I mean, it can be as complex or as simple as we choose to actually use it, but as we started attempting to create some new forms and weren't having very good success with it, we found that if you apply very simple 